Alright, first of all, those of you who have been following my channel for a long time might remember how I mentioned that my goal with these Toho theory videos have been to create a cohesive timeline for the whole Toho universe. Such timeline already exists, but it is full of holes that I have been trying to patch with these theories I have made. Now, those maybe two or three people that actually remember might also recall that I wasn't going to do this video until there was more info on Chang Yi and the true conflict between the Gensokyo and the Lunar Capital. However, knowing the current state and direction Soho has taken, I guess it is safe to assume that we might never get any definitive answers. Uh, or if we do, they are going to be pure shit and feces. I will probably make a video regarding that on some later date, but that is why I'm making this video before the canon of Toho falls completely apart and every single theory I've crafted is rendered obsolete. So without any further ado, grab a drink and relax because this is going to be a doozy and I don't even know whether this will be one colossal video or a multi-part series. Also, before we start, all the information discussed in this video can be found either in the Toho Wiki or from my previous videos. I will notify you whenever we stray onto the theory territory, but just so you know, all the theories have been deducted from the canon material. The aim is not to correct, fix or rearrange the canon, but just fill in the gaps that exist. Please keep that in mind. Okay, to start this video we must go back, all the way back. Not to the start of Toho as a franchise, not to the start of Japanese folklore, but all the way back to the birth of the universe. In the Big Bang, all energy and material was scattered into the universe together with all the primordial gods. Note that these beings didn't have a real identity or mind yet. They were just powerful spirits roaming around in the primordial soup. Spirits such as Suvako and Hecate would be amongst these primordial spirits. After the Big Bang, we make a small 9.2 billion year time jump to the creation of Earth. This is where the story truly starts. It is said that the gods themselves created Earth, so it wasn't just a coincidence of gravity forming the planet. The planet was molded by these primordial spirits. It is not known how many spirits were involved, but my guess would be every single primordial god that is at or within the field of Earth's influence today, and a lot more were involved. Also, it is worth noting that since the Earth was purposefully formed, the spirits had gained minds of their own and were capable of communication and coordination. After that we make another time jump and move to 3.77 billion years ago when life forms onto Earth and starts the endless battle for survival which is the source of all impurity. This first wave of life and death was concluded 374 million years ago in a late Devonian extinction. An extinction event that tainted all the oceans with impurity. Life rose to land 430 million years ago, but only slowly. After the extinction, however, life started to evolve rapidly, rising to the land and taking it with impurity as well. 252 million years ago, the keystone is pulled from the earth and from that the heaven is created. This event causes the Permian extinction event where near 90% of all life on earth perished. However, the legitimacy of this event cannot be concluded as there were no witnesses to it. Somewhere between the 252 and 25 million years ago, Arian is born. Exact year is not known. During this time, the dinosaurs came to become the dominant life force of the Earth and also perish in the Cretaceous extinction event. There are no references to that extinction event, so chances are it happened naturally. Next major event happens 25 million years ago, when Izanagi no Mikoto creates Japan by lifting it from the ocean. Eirin bears witness to this from the moon. 
Okay, now that the ancient history is out of the way, we'll delve into the difficult parts of this timeline, the early history described through Japanese mythology. Bear in mind that I cannot go into full detail, detail with each and every story to keep this video somewhat manageable, so the next event in our timeline is the Amano Ibato story and especially its end. No exact dates are given, but the event described in the story is Amaterasu coming from cave she was forced into, thus once again bathing the world in light. The rope used to seal the cave became the start of the Femto Fiber, and Amaterasu's younger brother Susano was exiled from Tagamagahara. Next up in the timeline is the White Rabbit of Inaba. I myself am not familiar with this myth and its events don't seem to be essential to the overarching story so I will not try to describe it further as I'm not able to. But those who are interested can do further research themselves. After this we get an event simply called the surrender of the country. Once again, I'm not familiar with the story but the simple gist is that Amatsukami plundered Okuninushi's country but fearing rebellion Okuninushi was sealed in Izumi temple using the earlier mentioned Femta fiber. The next major event in our timeline is the first event that directly ties into the world of Gensokyo. The event is thought to take place uh, 200 to 250,000 years ago. What happened is that Iwanagahime and Konohana Sakuyahime, gods that live on the Mount Fuji, didn't have the best of relationships. The mountains Fuji and Yatsugatake were compared and once it was deemed that Yatsugatake was the taller one enraged, Sakuyahime broke the Mount Yatsugatake into its current state. Iwanagahime tired of her little sister's shit, moved to now shattered Yatsugatake. Yatsugatake used to be the highest mountain in Japan, but now shattered and only a shadow of its former self, it became known as the Yukai Mountain, and faded into illusion. In some variations of the myth, there is also part where a tier of the mount Tateshina became the Lake Suba. Next up is the legend everyone on this channel is well aware of, Ho Yi shooting down the night sunbirds. This happened around 2070 BC during China's Jia dynasty. During this event Apollo is shot down as well causing hell ruled by Hecatea to darken. Yi later became the ruler of Jia dynasty and caused the death of Jungo's son, Bo Feng. An ally has been slain. Jungo then corroborated with Yi's minister. In the wiki it is assumed that the minister in question was Feng Meng to assassinate Yi and avenge her son. Notice that Chang Yi, Yi's wife, does not drink the elixir yet. Shut down. The next event on the timeline is Tsukuyomi and him taking his relatives to the moon where Eirin constructs the lunar capital. Since Moon is pure land without impurity, Tsukuyomi and his relatives no longer have lifespans and thus become Lunarians. It is assumed that Tsukuyomi and Amaterasu Omikami are siblings. It is only after the events described earlier that Changi, or also known as Yoga, drank the Hora elixir given to her by Eirin Yakugoro. The elixir was supposedly originally made for her husband, Yi, as a reward, but since Yi died, it was given to Chang Yi instead. This is where I delve onto the theoretical side of things. Knowing the timeline I just described to you, Yi died before the construction of the lunar capital and the creation of Lunarians. However, the elixir was made a considerable time after his death. Chang Yi left or was taken onto the moon soon after drinking the elixir to be imprisoned. This however contradicts the reward part of the story. This has led me to believe that having Chang Yi on the moon permanently is somehow vital to the existence of the lunar capital and the Lunarians purposefully gave her the elixir and imprisoned her afterwards to ensure 
they have her forever. Okay, theorizing over. Next up on the timeline is once again an event many of you are probably well aware of, the Great Suba War. The exact date of this event is not known, but it is assumed to have happened during the couple first centuries after the year zero of Christian calendar. The basic gist of what happened is that Subako had the strongest military force in Japan due to the iron weapons her armies used. However, Kanako, who used to be human but became a god in an unknown date, managed to beat her armies by rusting their weapons away. This prompted Subako to surrender. It is also worth mentioning that Subako Maria is the starting figure of the now known Kochia family. Sanai Kochia is Subako Maria's grandchild on 78th generation. Next up is the first event we know the exact date of. 7th of July 478, Mizueno Urano Shimako goes to the lunar capital. On the 7th of February, 574, Toyosato Mimi no Miko is born, and before the year 587, Seiga Kaku comes to Japan and recommends Taoism to Miko. During the July of 587, due to the actions of Mononobe no Futo, Teibi no Ran is freed and the Mononobe clan is destroyed in Soga Mononobe conflict. On the 8th of April, 622, Miko ascends to sleep in order to become Shikaisen. Around the year 648, a person by the name of Hiedano Are is born. As far as we are concerned, they are the starting point of the Hieda family. And now, attention, theories are coming up. But not by me. According to Kunoi Yanagita, it is possible that Hiedano Are was actually female. And further, according to Umehara Takeshi, it is possible that Hirano Are and a person by the name of Fujiwara no Fujito are the same person. And who is Fujiwara Fujito, I hear you asking? Well, that's what we'll be discussing next. Fujiwara no Fujito is a person who had four sons, born on 680, 681, 694 and 695. Fujito also had five daughters, the birth years of whom are only known for the oldest and the third daughter. 683 for the oldest and 701 for the third. However, it is the name of the fifth and the youngest daughter that is important to us. The youngest and hidden daughter was named Fujiwara no Moko. Around the years, 672 to 707 was the time when Kaguya drank the whole right elixir made to her by Eirin when she requested it. What follows is the classic story of the flight of the bamboo cutter. Kaguya lives amongst the human society and is renowned for the beauty. Many suitors try to cozy up to her, including Moko's father slash mother, depending on whether you believe the earlier mentioned theories. All are given impossible tasks to complete and Mako's father slash mother dies while attempting them. Finally, the emperor of Japan falls for Kaguya, but like before, Kaguya just isn't really feeling it with the damn humans, so she gives the emperor the whole right elixir, but doesn't stay with him. The emperor doesn't want to be immortal without Kaguya, so instead of drinking it, he orders it to be dropped into a volcano. The band of soldiers who are tasked with the dumping of the elixir find and rescue a girl on their way to the volcano. This girl then manages to murder the entire squad of soldiers to get her hands on the elixir. This girl is Moko. After drinking the elixir, she disappears from the public for hundreds of years. This happened around the years 681 and 712. Hiedano Are compiles the Kojiki around the same time. Up to 100 years after that, Eirin is sent to Earth to get Kaguya back to the moon, but instead she kills everyone who came down to Earth with her, finds Kaguya and establishes Eiente with her. Around the year 800, Hiedano Aichi is born and starts writing the Gensokyo Chronicles on their 18th birthday. 
Around this time is also the first confirmed sighting of Yukari. On the year 825, Mizueno Urano Shimako returns from the lunar capital to his hometown. Urashima Chinja Shrine is erected on 22nd of July the same year. Around the year 900, Nyoren Hijiri passes away, Byakuren becomes a yukai magician, gifts Minamitsu a palanquin ship, and is finally sealed away in Hokkai Makai, and the palanquin ship is sealed underground. A little before the year 1000, Yuyuka's father passes away under the Saigoi Akashi. Around the year 1000, Yuyuka then commits suicide and her body is used to seal the Saigoi Akashi tree. Yuga is given the reign over the netherworld during this ordeal. Shortly after this, Yukari initiates the first Genshin Lunar War by gathering large masses of Yukai by tempting them with the promises of power should they manage to conquer Lunar Capital. The conflict ended with the defeat of the Yukai. Yukari's true intentions behind this conflict are unknown. She herself claims it was to give the Yukai a lesson not to start conquests, which seems to have worked, because no conflict even remotely of its size has ever been started by Yukai after it. The last eruption of the Yukai mountain also happened roughly around the same time. 28th of April 990, Minamoto no Yorimitsu exterminates Shuten Doji, the Oni Suika is based on, with the help of his four big subordinates, not to be confused with the four divas of the mountain. Whether the Shuten Doji and Suika are the same character in this story is unknown. Around the year 1000, Aya settles in Gensokyo. Summer of 1153, Emperor Konoe begins to have nightmares caused by a black cloud that forms above his palace every night. Minamoto no Yorimasa kills the yukai with a bow and an arrow. It was originally thought that this yukai was Nue, but it turned out that the yukai in question was not related to her in any way. Around the years 1200 and 1400, Tei reveals herself and joins A and Tei. 1430 to 1476 was the reign of Vlad Thieves Dracula. Around the year 1500, Yukari set in motion the Yukai expansion plan. Up until this point, again, Sokyo had been just a place among every other in the middle of nowhere. However, this changed when Yukari established Gensokyo as a separate place of being from the world of reality. Yukai had started to weaken due to the growing human population and advancements in technology, so having a place not affected by the outside world's beliefs was enticing to many Yukai who started to migrate to Gensokyo. It is worth noting that at this point Gensokyo was still very much part of the outside world, it was not yet separated. However, Gensokyo was somehow separated from the world of reality and turned into the realm of fantasy where Yukai could thrive completely independent of the influence of the world around them. It is not known how this proto hackray barrier functioned as it didn't seem to affect the physical world, only the world of fantasy and belief. On the year 1502, Remilia Scarlet is born, and on the year 1507, Flandre Scarlet is born. Neither of the sisters are related to Vlad Thieves, even if Remilia claims so. Around the year 1700, Yoki becomes the gardener of Hakugyokuro. Roughly around the same time, maybe even earlier, Moko stumbles into Gensokyo and subsequently finds Ayente and Kaguya. This began the multi-hundred year era in their life of repeatedly killing each other. The year 1707 was the last recorded eruption of the Mount Fuji. Izanaka Hime moved to Yatsugatake Aka Yukai Mountain, which led to Fuji losing its flame. Somewhere between the years 1800 and 1800, 
1885 was the period of the eighth child of Miyare, Hiera no Ai. At this time, humans were starting to pose a real threat to the yukai of the outside world. 1872 to 1885 was the first official circulation of Japanese paper money. This happened before the creation of Hakurei Barrier. The year 1885 is so-called year zero in Gen Sokyo's calendar, as that year the real Hakurei Barrier we are all familiar with was erected by the sages of Gen Sokyo and some of the humans. This event is also the last time the Dragon God was seen. At the same time, Oni also moved the underground to the former capital and Tengu take control over the Yukai Mountain. This is also a sexagenary cycle year, meaning the flowers bloomed due to the abundance of souls. The same happened during the events of BOFV. Now, the following is not confirmed, but I can say with great confidence that the events of the Dolls in Pseudo Paradise's booklet take place between the years 1885 and 1920. Sometime around the year 1900, Patchouli is born. 1905, the Yamainu goes extinct in the outside world, however, the species survives in Gensokyo. Now, this is once again theorizing material. Due to the difficulty of pinpointing the timeline between the PC-98 era and Windows era, I have come to a conclusion that the PC-98 takes place considerable time earlier than the Windows games. I cannot say for sure when the events would have taken place, but I would say somewhere between the years 1930 and 1980. This would make the timeline between the two eras more cohesive and realistic as the characters and the environment changes so much. 1945, the World War II ends, the Hakurei barrier weakens this year. This year is also another sexagenary year. Chirno is around during this time. Corindo is established sometime before the year 1963. 1st of November 1963 is the first known published issue of Bunbun Maro newspaper. It is unclear whether the newspaper has been around before that already or if this is the de facto first issue. 21st of July 1969, USA lands onto the surface of the moon and Neil Armstrong plants the US flag onto it. This flag is supposedly in Gensokyo during the present time. From the year 1969 onward up until an unknown year, USA and Lunar Capital enter a conflict with each other that is kept secret from the public of the outside world. It is known that the war lasted at least to the year 1972 as USA sent the Apollo capsules 11 to 17 to the moon's surface during these three years. Apollo 13 is damaged during its trip to the moon. Only Lunarians know the real reason why. Approximately 35 years ago, Raisin arrives in Gensokyo. She is a deserter of the lunar war between USA and the lunar capital. She arrived to the ANT before the 100th year of Hakurei Barrier being up. The night when she arrived was a full moon. Between the years 1976 and 19. 86. Yuyuka put a ghost immigration plan into motion as the netherworld was becoming more and more crowded due to the difficulty of ascension. Yuyuka allowed human spirits to leave the netherworld to wait for their reincarnation in the outside world. The places she allowed the spirits to inhabit were places where humans rare, rarely dwell, mainly abandoned buildings leading to many ghost sightings. However, when Yama caught wind of this, they put the plan in ice and made the spirits to return to Netherworld. They then agreed to increase the size of the Netherworld, which is now said to be even bigger than the hell itself. 
3rd of April 1980, Bun Bun Maru article, What Would the Propriety of the Mist Nets Be, was released. 2nd of March 1984, Bun Bun Maru article, Skeletal Remains Found from the Dead Well, was released. It is suspected that this is Kisume's doing. Less than 60 years ago, Yoki retires from his duties as Hakugyokura's gardener. Yumu Konpaku takes his place. 1st of July 1994, Bunbun Maru article presenting the 9th Are Maiden is released. This is approximate birth date of Hiedana Q, probably a day or two earlier. 22nd of August 1998, Bunbun Maru article Sudden Location Change at Poltergeist's Concert is released. The Scarlet Devil Mansion appeared in Gensokyo shortly after this article was released. The same year the infamous vampire incident takes place. This has been confirmed to have been caused by Remelia. After this, the spell card rules are created. 1st of October 1999, Bunbun Maru article Is the Middle Prism River Sister Going Solo? is released. 4th of May 2000, Bunbun Maru article In Search of New Sound is released. 4th of August 2000, Bunbun Maru article Mysterious Luxury Items Arrives at Corindo is released. 2nd of August 2001, Bun Bun Maru article Demon Lurks in the Dark in Broad Daylight is released. The beat up Rumia mentions in the article is probably not EOSD, as this article is released two years before the events of EOSD. 2nd of September 2002, Bun Bun Maru article The Truth About the Enigmatic History Society is released. Enigmatic History Society is a group of human villagers who wish to eradicate Yukai and allow humans to take full control over Gensokyo. 4th of August 2003, Bun Bun Maru article in a string of successive midsummer burglaries, the culprit was photographed in the act is released. Okay, we've now gone through the history before the release of EOSD. From here on out, I won't go through the events in as great detail as before, because now we'll start having an increasing amount of specific dates. And trust me, we'll have a lot of them. This'll be its own segment and a long one at that, and if you're not interested in the whole canonical timeline of the games and print works, you can skip it as after we've gone through all the events, we'll go a little deeper into some interesting theories and plot points. So let us begin. 12th of August 2003, the events of Embodiment of the Scarlet Devil take place. This event is the first time ever the spell card rules are used to resolve an incident and just a side note, Remilia had been spreading the mist starting from July already, but it was a month after this until heroines finally took action. Winter between 2003 and 2004, the chapters from 1 to 5 of Curiosities of Lotus Asia take place. 1st of May 2004, Bun Bun Maru article Spring Summoning Ritual Held to Counter Prolonged Cold Wave is released. 3rd of May 2004, Bun Bun Maru article Mysterious Flower Petals Beneath the Cherry Trees is released. 4th of May 2004, the events of PCB take place and 10 days later the events of PCB Extra and Phantasm take place. 3rd of June 2004, Bun Bun Maru article Large number of straw effigies found in the forest behind the shrine is released. This is about a murder ritual Alice was attempting and which I ruined. 4th of July 2004, Bun Bun Maru article Out of Season the Great Setsubun Festival at the Scarlet Devil Manor is released. During July 2004, events of immaterial and missing power take place. During the summer of 2004, the chapters 6 to 9 of Curiosities of Lotus Asia take place. 
3rd of August 2004, Bunbun Maro article Treasure Hunter Raises the Knife and Yukai Practices Animal Abuse are released. 4th of August 2004, Bunbun Maro article Suspicious Fire in the Bamboo Forest is released. 5th of August 2004, Bunbun Maro article Phantom Procession on a Midsummer Afternoon is released. 2nd of September 2004, Bunbun Maro article Insects News Service Stars is released. 4th of September 2004, Bunbun Maro article Mysterious Pattern in Flower Bed is released. The night between 27th and 28th of September 2004, the events of Imperishable Night take place. 2nd of October 2004, Bunbun Maro article A Village of Cats is released. 29th of October 2004, the extra stage of Imperishable Night takes place. During the autumn of 2004, the chapter 10 of Curiosities of Lotus Asia takes place. 1st of December 2004, Bunbun Maro article A New Dream Medicine for a Modern Gensokyo is released. 4th of January 2005, Bunbun Maro article Audacious Donation Fraud is released. The winter between 2004 and 2005, the chapters from 11 to 13 of Curiosities of Lotus Asia take place. 2005 is the third known sexagenary cycle year known to us. During the spring of 2005, at an unknown date, but in the following order, the chapters 14 of Curiosities of Lotus Asia take place, the events of Eastern and Little Nature Deity Stars, and the events of Phantasmagoria of Flower View take place. 1st of April 2005, Bunbun Maro article Flower Viewing Continues at the Shrine is released. 1st of May 2005, Bunbun Maro article Width of the Sanzu River is Calculated is released. 1st of June 2005, Bunbun Maro article Ice Fairy Eaten by a Giant Toad is released. Between 14th and 15th of July 2005, the events of Chapter 1 of Eastern and Little Nature Deity take place. 23rd of July 2005, the articles detailed in the Bohemian Archive in Japanese Red are released to the people of Gensokyo. During the summer of 2005, the chapter 15 of Curiosities of Lotus Asia takes place. 3rd of August 2005, Bunbun Maro article Strange Reverse Rainbow in the Summer Noon is released. 23rd of September 2005, Eastern and Little Nature Deity Chapter 2 takes place. 13th of October 2005, Bunbun Maro article Night Sparrow's Promising New Operation is released. 1st of November 2005, Bunbun Maro article ANT Hosts Lunar Capital Expo is released. 2nd of November 2005, Bunbun Maro article Rabbit Horn League Protests Shrine Banquet is released. 17th of November 2005, Eastern and Little Nature Deity Chapter 3 takes place. During the autumn of 2005, the Chapter 16 of Curiosities of Lotus Asia takes place. 1st of January 2006, Bunbun Maro article The Midwinter Moon's Great Explosion is released. During the winter between 2005 and 2006, and at unknown dates, the chapters 4 and 5 of Eastern and Little Nature Deity take place, and the chapters 17 and 18 of Curiosities of Lotus Asia take place. 4th of March 2006, Bunbun Maro article Enormous Shooting Star Explodes in Mid-Air is released. 5th of April 2006, the chapter 19 of Curiosities of Lotus Asia takes place. 12th of June 2006, the chapter 1 of Strange and Bright Nature Deity takes place. 9th of August 2006, chapter 2 of Strange and Bright Nature Deity takes place. The summer 2006, the chapter 20 of Curiosities of Lotus Asia also takes place.
29th of September 2006, Chapter 3 of Strange and Bright Nature Deity takes place. During the autumn of 2006, the Chapter 21 of Curiosities of Lotus Asia takes place. 27th of December 2006, Hirano Akiu publishes her again Sokyo Chronicles. 2nd of January 2007, Bunbun Maru article What is the future of the Worn Out 2 is released. During the winter between 2006 and 2007, at unknown dates, the chapters 22 and 23 of Curiosities of Lotus Asia takes place together with the chapter 4 of Strange and Pride Nature Deity. 25th of January 2007, Chapter 5 and 6 of the Strange and Bright Nature Deity take place. The same winter, in 2007, Moria Shrine arrives in Gensokyo on top of the Yukai Mountain. 1st of May 2007, Silent Sinner in Blue's Prologue takes place. 2nd of May 2007, Chapter 24 of Curiosities of Lotus Asia takes place. During the spring of 2007, at unknown dates, Strange and Bright Nature Deity Chapter 7 to 10 take place, together with the Curiosities of Lotus Asia Chapter 25. Between the 16th and 17th of July 2007, Chapter 11 and 12 of Strange and Bright Nature Deity occur. 29th of July 2007, the Chapter 1 of Silent Senior in Blue, Cage in Lunatic Runagate, and Inaba of the Moon and Inaba of the Earth take place. 30th of July, the Chapter 2 of Silent Senior in Blue, and Inaba of the Moon and Inaba of the Earth take place. 4th of August 2007, Chapter 7 of Silent Senior in Blue takes place. 28th of August 2007, the chapter 3 and 8 of Sun Engineer in Blue take place. The same summer, chapter 26 of Curiosities of Lotus Asia happens at an unknown date. 25th of September 2007, the chapter 4 of Sun Engineer in Blue and the chapter 2 of Gage in Lunatic Runagate take place together with the chapter 4 of Inaba of the Moon and Inaba of the Earth. 26th of October 2007, Silent Cedar in Blue Chapter 5 and 6 take place together with Cage in Lunatic Runagate Chapter 3. 7th of November 2007, Curiosities of Lotus Asia Chapter 27 takes place. The same autumn at an unknown date, the Strange and Bright Nature Deity Chapters 13 and 14, Mountain of Faith, In Above the Moon and In Above the Earth Chapter 5 and 6, and Silent Sinner in Blue Chapter 8 take places. Alright, next up is the winter between 2007 and 2008. A lot of shit is about to happen, so let me go over all of it as quickly as I can. 10th of November 2007, the Chapter 9 of Silent, Chapter 5, Part 1 of Runagate, and Chapter 9 of Inaba take places. 12th of November 2007, Chapter 10 of Silent and Chapters 4 and 5, Part 2 of Runagate take place. 17th of November 2007, Chapter 11, First Half of Silent, Chapter 5, Part 3 of Runagate and Chapter 11 of Inaba take place. At unknown date in November 2007, the Chapter 22 of Inaba takes place. 23rd of November 2007, Chapter 5, Part 4 of Runagate takes place. Between 24th and 25th of November 2007, the Chapters 11, Second Half, 12 to 19, and the flashback of 20th of Silent, Chapter 5, Part 5, Chapter 6, 7, and the final chapter, First Half of Runagate take place. 7th of December 2007, Chapter 20, First Part of Silent takes place. In December 2007, at unknown dates, the parts 1 and 2 of the second half of the final chapter of Runagate take place. 25th of December 2007, Chapter 20, 
last part of the final chapter of Silent and Runagate final chapter, second half part 3, take place. In December, at an unknown date, the chapter 7 of Inaba takes place. Between the 31st of December 2007 and 1st of January 2008, the chapters 15 and 16 of Strange and Bright Nature Deity take places. Okay, time to slow down again just a little bit now that that's over. The following spring at unknown dates, but in the following order, the Fairy Wars and the chapter 17 and 18 of Strange and Bright Nature Deity take places. 20th of May 2008, the chapter 19 and 20 of Strange and Bright Nature Deity take place. The following summer, 2008, at unknown dates, in the following order, the Strange and Bright Nature Deity chapters 21 and 22, together with Scarlet Weather Rhapsody, take places. 2nd of July, 2008, Budbun article, The Hakurei Shrine Collapses, is released. 1st of August 2008, Gunbunwaru article Incident on the Yukai Mountain is released. The autumn of 2008, the chapters 23 to 25 of Strange and Bright Nature Deity take place. Also, according to the prologue of UFO, the harvest was poor this year due to the weather caused by the Scarlet Weather Rhapsody. The following winter is a mishmash of events of unknown dates, so let me go over them in an order which they happen. Hakure Shrine is rebuilt. Between the December and January, the events of subterranean animism take place. The Palanquin ship is subsequently released from the underground. Between 8th and 11th of January 2009, the chapter 20 of In Above the Moon and In Above the Earth takes place. The chapter 21 takes place in February at an unknown date. 2nd of March 2009, Kakashi Spirit News article Instant Hina Dolls Become Popular is released. Kakashi Spirit News is a rival newspaper to Bunbun Maru, ran by Hatate, and this is the earliest known publication of it. Spring 2009, the following events happened at an unknown date in the following order. Undefined Fantastic Object, Oriental Sacred Place, Chapters 1 and 2, and In Above the Moon and In Above the Earth, Chapters 24 through 27. The following summer, more events happened with unknown dates. First, the events of Hiso Soku, and after that, the Chapters 3 and 4 of Oriental Sacred Place. 1st of August 2009, Bunbun Maru article Super Accurate Extreme Local Weather Forecast is released. 3rd of August 2009, Bunbun Maru articles A Step in Translating with the Mysterious Zombie and The Buddhist Service for the Yukai at the Night of Summer are released. 3rd of November 2009, Bunbun Maru article Opinions Divided on Mountains Future Direction is released. The same autumn of 2009, the following events also happened at unknown dates, in the following order. Oriental Sacred Place chapters 5 and 6, double spoiler, and after that the chapters 7 and 8 of Oriental Sacred Place. Here we have a small time gap and go straight to the spring of 2010. 5th of April, Kakashi Thought Report article secretly broken up Great War is released. The same spring, at an unknown date, the chapter 1 of Wild and Hornet Hermit takes place. The following summer, 2010, at unknown dates, the following events take place in the following order. Chapters 9 and 10 of Oriental Sacred Place and the chapter 2 of Wild and Hornet Hermit. 22nd of September 2010, the chapter 11 of Oriental Sacred Place takes place. 22nd of November, the chapter 3 of Wild and Hornet Hermit takes place. 4th of December 2010, Kakashi Thought reports article Aliens from Brightly Burning Ball of Fire is released. Between 30th and 31st of December 2010, chapter 12 of Oriental Sacred Place takes place. The following winter, between 2010 and 2011, the chapter 4 of Wild and Hornet Hermit and the chapter 13 of Oriental Sacred 
place also take places at unknown dates. In spring 2011 only two things occur at unknown dates in the following order. First Wallen Hornet Hermit chapter 5 and later the events of 10 desires. 5th of June 2011 Kakashi Thoth report article Legend of the Veil Marriage Act is released. 1st of July 2011 Bunbun Bun Battle article A Savior for the Falsely Accused Victims is released. The same summer 2011 the following events take place the chapter 6 and 7 of Wallen Hornet Hermit together with the chapters 14 and 15 of Oriental Sacred Place. The next autumn the chapter 8 of Wallen Hornet Hermit and the chapter 16 of Oriental Sacred Place follow. 4th of October 2011, Bun Bun Baro article The New Trend in Yukai Music is released. 4th of December 2011, Bun Bun Baro article A New Business in the Busy Time at the End of the Year is released. The winter between 2011 and 2012, the following events also take place. Chapters 9 and 10 of Wadden Hornet Hermit chapters 17 and 18 of Oriental Sacred Place and the whole of Symposium of Post-Mysticism. The spring of 2012 has also chapters 11 and 12 of Wild and Hornet Hermit happening. The summer of autumn 2012 aren't any more eventful. The summer we have the chapter 13 of Wild and Hornet Hermit and autumn we have the chapter 1 of Forbidden Scrollery. The winter between 2012 and 2013 sees a bit more action. The following entries take place at unknown dates in the following order. December 2012 we are having Wadden Hornet Hermit chapter 14 and Forbidden Scrollery chapters 2 and 3. After those in 2013 we have Forbidden Scrollery chapters 4 and 5 and Wadden Hornet Hermit chapter 15. In spring we have three events at unknown dates in the following order. Wadden Hornet Hermit chapter 16, Forbidden Scrollery chapter 6 and 7 and Wadden Hornet Hermit chapter 17. The summer 2013 follows the same formula as before. More events happening at unknown dates. We have Forbidden Scrollery chapters 8 and 9, the events of Hopeless Masquerade, Wadden Hornet Hermit chapter 18, and finally, Forbidden Scrollery 10 and 11. Note the chapters of Wild and Hornet and Forbidden listed after Hopeless Masquerade take place during the time window during which the Hopeless Masquerade takes place. The autumn 2013 we have the events of Double Dealing Character, after which we have Forbidden Scrollery chapters 12 and 13, and Wild and Hornet Hermit chapter 19. After a long while, we finally have an event that has a known date. The chapter 20 of Wadden Hornet Hermit takes place during 3 days, 3rd, 15th and 17th of November. After that, between the winter of 2013 and 2014, we have Forbidden Scrollery chapters 14 and 15 and Wild and Hornet Hermit chapter 21 taking place. Spring of 2014 we have Forbidden Scrollery chapters 16 and 17, Wild and Honored Hermit chapter 22, Forbidden Scrollery chapter 18 and 19 and Wild and Hornet Hermit chapter 23. The events of Impossible Spellcard also take place during the spring of 2014. Summer brings more of the same with Forbidden Scrollery chapters 20 and 21 and Wilden Hornet Hermit chapter 24. Also, as a side fact that's not relevant to this video, in the late August of 2014, a young bloke from Finland learns of the existence of a game series called Toho. The autumn 2014 brings once again more of the same with chapters 22 and 24 of Forbidden Scrollery and chapter 25 of Wadden Horned Hermit. Winter between 2014 and 2015 we have more Wadden Hornet Hermit with chapter 26 and Forbidden Scrollery with chapters 24 and 25. 
8th of February in 2015, the events of Wild and Hornet Hermit Chapter 27 take place. The spring of 2015 we have more of the same old. The Forbidden Scrollery Chapters 26 and 27 together with Wild and Hornet Hermit Chapter 28 take place. And after these all the routes except Raisins of Urban Legend in Limbo take, take place. The summer brings more of the stuff we're used to again at unknown dates. First we have Forbidden Scrollery chapters 28 and 29, then Wild and Hornet Hermit chapter 29, followed by more Forbidden Scrollery with chapters 30 and 31. The summer wraps up with the Curiosities of Lotus Asia chapter 28. The autumn 2015 we have Forbidden Scrollery chapters 32 and 33, the events of Legacy of Lunatic Kingdom and the chapter 30 of Wild and Hornet Hermit. The winter between 2015 and 2016 goes as follows. First we have chapters 34 and 35 of Forbidden Scroller. Then on 30th and 31st of December 2015 we have Wild and Hornet Hermit chapter 31. Going over to 2016 we have chapter 1 of Visionary Fairies in Shrine. Forbidden Scrollery chapters 36 and 37 and lastly Wild and Hornet Hermit chapter 32. The spring 2016 continues the already set formula of events happening at unknown dates. For first we have Forbidden Scrollery chapters 38 and 39 followed by Visionary Fairish in Shrine chapter 2. The spring concludes with Wild and Hornet Hermit chapter 33 and Forbidden Scrollery chapters 40 and 41. After a while we once again get an event with a set in stone date. 24th of June 2016 chapter 34 of Wild and Hornet Hermit takes place. The summer continues with Curiosities of Lotus Asia chapter 29, Wild and Hornet Hermit chapter 35, Visionary Fairish in Shrine, Chapter 3, and Forbidden Scrollery, Chapters 42 and 43. Autumn 2016 has the following events take place. Wild and Hornet Hermit, Chapter 36, Forbidden Scrollery, Chapters 44 and 45, and Visionary Fairies in Shrine, Chapter 4, which takes place roughly at the same time as the Chapter 45 of Forbidden Scrollery. Winter between 2016 and 2017 sees fairly lot of action. These include Visionary Fairies in Shrine, Chapter 5, Forbidden Scrollery, Chapters 46 and 47, Wild and Hornet Hermit, Chapter 37, and Curiosities of Lotus Asia, Chapter 30. Next up, we once again get a solid date, 1st of March 2017. Kakashi Spirit News article, The New Era Where Outsiders Can Freely Come and Go, is released. This is followed by Forbidden Scrollery, chapters 48 and 49, and Wild and Hornet Hermit, chapter 38. Note that I decided not to publish the alternative facts in Eastern Utopia around the same time with the chapter 49 of Forbidden Scrollery. Spring of 2017 sees an unusual amount of action when compared to what we've had lately. We start off with getting chapters from 50 to 53 of Forbidden Scrollery, which concludes the series. This is followed by Visionary Fairies in Shrine, Chapter 6, and Wild and Hornet Hermit, Chapter 39. After this, the Raisins' extra story of urban legend in Limbo finally takes place. Next, we get the Curiosities of Lotus Asia, chapter 32. Notice the one chapter skipped. The spring concludes with Antanami of Common Flowers taking place. However, as a side note, there is a line of dialogue in the game between Reimu and Moko which directly references upcoming events of the chapter 40 of Wild and Hornet Hermit. This is most likely just an error. Between the 6th and 7th of July 2017, Visionary Fairies in Shrine Chapter 7 takes place. 
Now, during the summer of 2017, we finally get the previously mentioned Wild and Hornet Hermit chapters 40 and 41, which is directly followed by the events of Hidden Star in Four Seasons. Visionary Fairies in Shrine chapter 8 takes place shortly after the events of Hidden Star, and that is subsequently followed by the chapter 31 of Curiosities of Lotus Asia. The following autumn is quiet and only sees the chapter 42 of Wild and Hornet Hermit happening. The winter between 2017 and 2018 sees a bit more action, with Wild and Hornet Hermit chapter 43, Visionary Fairies in Shrine chapter 9, parts 1 and 2, and lastly the 15th of February 2018, the events of chapter 44 of Wild and Hornet Hermit occur. Spring 2018, we got Wild and Hornet Hermit Chapter 45, Visionary Fairies in Shrine Chapter 10, Curiosities of Lotus Asia Chapter 32, non flashback portion, and the Chapter 46 of Wild and Hornet Hermit. The following summer was somewhat of a Visionary Fairies in Shrine Marathon as we got Chapter 11 Parts 1 and 2, Chapters 12, 13, 14 and 15 which concluded the series. Autumn 2018 started with the Curiosities of Lotus Asia Chapter 33 and takes place partially at the same time as Violet Detector, which is listed as the next event. That is followed by Curiosities of Lotus Asia, Chapter 34, and the day later Hakurei Fireworks Festival, which is detailed in Grimoire of Uzami. 2018 is concluded this time already in the autumn with the chapters 47 to 50 of Warden Hornet Hermit, which is the last primary chapter of the series. After that, we get a relatively massive time gap and jumped straight to summer 2019 when we get an epilogue chapter of Wild and Hornet Hermit taking place. The summer continued with the events of Wily Beast and Weakest Creature, which is followed by Cheating Detective Satori chapters from the 1st all the way to the 11th chapter in a single summer, which is where the series was cancelled and we might never know how the events concluded. Autumn 2019 we got Curiosities of Lotus Asia chapter 35 and the events of chapters 1 to 5 of Lotus Eaters. From here on out, the events get really sparse and we jump right into spring 2020, where we got chapters 6 to 10 of Lotus Eaters. During summer the events of chapters 11 and 12 of Lotus Eaters took place and lastly in the autumn the chapters 13, 14 and 15 of Lotus Ears. And with all that we finally move to the winter 2021, when the chapters 16 and 17 of Lotus Ears occurred. And finally in the spring 2021 we got Curiosities of Lotus Asia chapter 36, the events of Unconnected Marketeers and lastly as the latest known event to happen, the events of the chapters 18 and 19 of Lotus Eaters. And with that massive amount of dates and chapters and all that good shit we finally shifted and sorted through, we can finally delve into a little more deeper events of the plot. Note that in this section of the video we'll go back to the events we just went through just to explain some interesting plot events a little better and do a little theorizing while we're at it. I'll tell you what is a theory and what is confirmed canon. Okay, first thing I want to touch upon is the whole dolls in Suda Paradise and the short stories that were introduced with it. The basic gist of this theory is in its simplicity, who is the killer? And I'm just going to say it outright, I'm 90% sure that the killer aka the Piero in that story is Alice and that story is a story of how she became a yukai. I'm not going to go deeper into the details because there's a lot to explain as to how I came into that conclusion but if you want more reasons as to why I think that you can watch the two videos on the topic I've made. 
They may be somewhat outdated, but still give a good idea on my thoughts on the topic. One smaller theory the community has come up with is that during the events of IN, when Marissa talks about putting straw hats on the Jizo statues, which references a Japanese folk tale, she accidentally created Naru. Because in that folk tale, a Jizo came alive when a man puts a straw hat onto it. Community has theorized that the same happened in Del Sokyo as well, and that's how Narumi was born. There really isn't much else to support this theory, but I personally think it would be really cool if true. Next we'll talk about Scarlet Devil Mansion and the Moria Shrine coming to Gensokyo. The thing with them is that we don't know how they got into Gensokyo with their whole buildings and with Moria crew, they even brought a lake. Now, it is fair to assume that they brought themselves there, however I think it would be a massive feat to pull off something like that, especially with the lake and the Moria Shrine, even if they have couple gods. Now, my theory as to how they were transported into Gensokyo is that it was done by Okina, because in the Grimoire of Uzami, we learn that Okina is very much eager to invade the Lunar Capital, for reasons we are not told. One thing that connects Moria crew and the SDM crew is that both are connected to the moon one way or the other. With SDM it is more obvious with the whole vampire shenanigans, Remilia is by default dependent on the moon. Then there's Moria Shrine which actually has even closer relationship with the moon and the lunar capital. Many people don't know this but in the Moria Shrine there is a Lunarian god of war sealed into it. Something like that is sure to grab the attention of someone who holds any kind of animosity towards the Lunarians. So basically what I'm trying to say here is that Okina may be seeking allies willing to aid her in an invasion of Lunar Capital. It wouldn't be too much of a stretch considering how she interacted with Junko and Hecate in the Grimoire of Uzami. And just one thing I wanna add is that Okina is more than capable of bringing the SDM and Morias into Gensokyo, knowing her ability which is really similar to Yukaris and her occupation as a sage of Gensokyo and the guardian of the barrier. I also have a video on this topic as well if you're interested. One thing I also want to briefly mention is how near every game from Mountain of Faith to Hopeless Masquerade are directly caused by one another. It's not big info, but a neat little tidbit of info if you didn't know. Similarly, nearly all the games with the exception of Hidden Star in Four Seasons from ULIL to VT are directly caused by one another. And while we're at the topic of ULIL, it is worth to mention that Sumireko Uzami is the ancestor of Renko Uzami, who we will talk more about soon, the founder of the Secret Sealing Club and probably the first outside world human to learn of the existence of Gensokyo. One additional piece of info I also want to mention about the urban legend incident caused by the Lunarians with the occult balls is that after LOLK, Marisa is the person in the possession of the original occult ball, which kickstarted the whole incident. But now, when all these pieces of information and theories are finally out of the way, we can move on to the final stages of Toho's timeline. Yep, even though we reached the present day, with the events of the games and print works, there is still more to cover because now we are heading into the future and the stories given to us in the booklets of CDs Zun has released. The exact dates or even somewhat accurate dates during which the events described in the CD booklets happen are not known. Only thing we know is that they happen somewhere in the future. Alright, so before we actually start to talk about Maribel and Renko, we gotta go through a couple of events that have happened between our present time and the time where Maribel and Renko live. The first and foremost thing is that Earth has been polluted and ravaged to hell and back. Large portions of Earth are considered unhabitable and a lot of species have gone extinct, bamboo being one of these species. 
Humans have also sent full-on self-sustaining space stations into the orbit to try and evolve new kinds of species able to withstand ever-worsening ecosystem of Earth. One of these space stations is later abandoned, and the space station is named Torifune, which against all odds managed to maintain its own independent ecosystem even after its abandonment. Humans have also managed to colonize the moon, which is the only stellar object besides Earth which humans have managed to colonize. Come to time of Maribel and Renko, one last detail we are given is that the Mount Fuji has finally gone or declared extinct. All this knowledge combined, I would assume that the events we are about to discuss happen at least 100 years into the future, probably more. Okay, now that we've set the stage, it's time to bring forth the last characters whose actions we'll take a closer look at. Just keep in mind that while we know the chronological order in which the events occur, we don't know the exact dates. Our known timeline returns at an unknown date when Maribel and Renko are both university students. Not much is known about the origins of the two other than Renko is ethnic Japanese, while Maribel most likely is a foreigner. The two are the sole members of the Secret Sealing Club, which is still ongoing, and Renko is the descendant of its founder, Sumirako Uzami. It's also worth to note that the members of Maribel's lineage have had the ability to see borders and boundaries, the same ability Maribel herself also has. The first real story we have with the two has them trying to find an entrance to Netherworld with the location of Moon and Maribel's ability from a ghostly field, and they manage to actually make some form of contact, to such extent that the two actually come unknowingly into contact with Yuyuko. Renko and Maribel weren't able to see her though. The story continues in Changeability of Strange Dream, which is the first time we hear Maribel and Rengo talk about Gensokyo. However, Maribel has apparently visited it a couple times before. The two, however, don't know what the world Maribel has visited is. During the adventure, Maribel eventually was attacked by Yukai but managed to escape and took items back with her. This confirms to Renko that the world Maribel has visited is real even if Maribel herself thinks it is just a dream. In Magical Astronomy, Maribel and Renko talk about possible commercial travel to the surface of the moon. They also talk about the fantastical side of the moon that Maribel has seen in her dreams, and the two are eager to take a trip. It's here where Maribel comes up with the idea of using the reflection of the moon on the surface of water to travel to the moon, the same tactic Yukari uses in the silent scenery in blue. In Trojan Green Asteroid, Maribel and Rengo discuss the abandoned microhabitat space station Torifune. Maribel claims to have seen that it is still functional through her dreams. She has also seen a shrine of Ameno Torifune. So to travel to the space station, the two travel to a shrine of Ameno Torifune on the Earth and use Maribel's ability to transport them to the space station through their dreams. In the station, they discover a completely self-sustaining ecosystem. In the station, the two, however, are attacked by a creature that is described as a chimera. After waking up back on Earth, Maribel discovers a cut on her arm and is sent to hospital. This proves to them that they weren't just seeing dreams and instead were transported there in person. Neo-traditionalism of Japan takes us a bit forward. While in the hospital, the doctors thought Maribel had some unknown virus causing sleepwalk and hallucinations, so she was sent to a quarantine facility in the mountains. Once released, her powers had grown considerably and could now see visions even while awake. She and Renko then discussed about hell. But Maribel leaves out the fact that while she was in quarantine, she did physically visit hell. Renko tells Maribel that while she was gone, there was talks about a found stone tool that was apparently 25 million years old. 
It was, however, thought to be a hoax. Maribel, however, believes otherwise. She then shows Rengo one she had found herself. Maribel then shows Rengo a vision of the underground world she found the tool in and Rengo recognizes Ameno Sakahoko from the vision, making Maribel believe that it was the realm of the gods instead of hell. The two then set out to find more of these Izanagi objects. In Dr. Latency's freak report, the two are planning to publish a book about what they've found and seen trying to rationalize the things defying what the common sense of the world was. They would use a pen name, Dr. Latency. Maribel was the one who dictated most of the contents of the book. Not much else happens in the story. And lastly, in the dateless bar Old Adam, they do go to a bar called Old Adam. A place where people who believe in supernatural and the fans of their previously published book, Swalosto Naturalis Historia, gather. These people believe the contents of Maribel's and Rengo's book to be true. Maribel's and Rengo's intention is to listen to the stories of the locals and see if there are any other people with special abilities. And that's all we have of Maribel's and Rengo's adventures as of now. Evidently, it is not that much in the context, but what it lacks in sheer volume, it excels in putting meaning into that little content it gives. And now, of course, it is time for me to give my own thoughts on the events we just went through. Like always, it is important to remember that the following ideas I will present to you are not canon, however, they are based on canon material and try to piece it together. Alright, so the first theory I have for you is the most obvious one, Yukari and Maribel being the same person. There are so many connections between the two that I could make a whole video talking about just them. Not to mention, Zan himself has made hints at the connection between the two, mainly by bringing up Lafcadio Hearn, a person from real life to which both Yukari and Maribel are based on. So what I have gathered is that this story of Maribel and Renko is actually the origin story of Yukari. The timeline may seem rather funky now that I've proposed the possibility, but don't worry, it will make sense later. The next theory I must present to you is the elephant in the room. Maribel seemingly being able to time travel and what that could mean. From the stories we learn that Maribel can visit other dimensions or move between great distances in an instant with her gaps. However, when she traveled to Gensokyo, she visited it seemingly in the past. There is also the fact that humans have colonized the moon, which was a huge plot point previously, as humans arriving to the moon meant the start of a war between USA and Lunar Capital. However, humans being on the moon comfortably without a conflict could suggest that the lunar capital was eventually defeated. Combine this with the perplexing case of Maribel never visiting the Gensokyo of her present time, and I'm left with the feel that neither Gensokyo or lunar capital exist anymore after a couple hundred years or so that we skipped moving from the most recent events of Toho to the story of Maribel and Renko. Knowing that Gensokyo and Lunar Capital are physically connected by the barrier that surrounds Gensokyo being in contact with the barrier around Lunar Capital, it isn't too far-fetched to assume that the disappearing of the two might be connected. The reason for which, however, is completely out in the air. Then there's the issue of Seiho. A lot of people don't even regard Seiho and Toho being related, even if Zun worked on Seiho and Reimu, Marisa and Yuka all appear as bosses in the series. So that being said, even if there is no real evidence to support the two being related, I'm still going to shove the two together in a form of Seiho being the future Maribel and Renko live in. The only real evidence I can offer is that in both the nature is well and truly fucked, they have spaceships and space travel and Reimu, Marisa and Yu can make appearances. Other than that, this is purely a headcanon, but something I wanted to mention nonetheless. And the last theory I'm going to bring up is the what happens to Maribel and Renko, which is the most ambitious theory I've ever crafted and one I'm really proud of. 
Now, I think most of us can agree that Maribel is most likely Yukari. My theory really relies on this assumption. So now that that's established, we may go deeper. Maribel ending up in the past as Yukari is not impossible, knowing the fact that time travel is possible, at least for Maribel herself. Then we get to the meat of this theory. It is well established that Yukari absolutely hates Lunarians and Lunar Capital, reason for which is never truly revealed. There is also the fact that Yukari's goal for the first Genshin Lunar War is also somewhat of a mystery. However, the point where the plot thickens is in Legacy of Limited Kingdom. Brief summary of the game's events are as follows. Junko and Hecatia invade Lunar Capital in hopes of getting to Chang'e the person we mentioned earlier. Lunarians react by moving everyone to dream world and with the power of the occult balls attempt to move the capital to Gensokyo. The heroines intervene and they save both Gensokyo and Lunar Capital by defeating Junko and Hecate. However, here's the big cheese. Where was Yukari during all of this? Surely should she hate Lunar Capital even half as much as she does, she would have used this opportunity to wipe them out. However, she left herself out from the events completely. The plot thickens even more in the grimoire of Uzami, where Yukari is shown to full-on ask help from the Lunar Capital to calm the festival gone wild when Junko and Hecatia decide to make an entrance. The two were invited by Okina who seems really interested in helping the two out to invade the Lunar Capital. Yukari, however, seems completely the opposite. So, what is going on here? Well, I believe the answer lies in understanding the motives of Jungo and Hecatia. The two obviously want to get to Chang'e. However, knowing she is immortal, we are met with the question, but why? I mean, torture is the obvious answer, but there might be more. Hecatia as a character is based on a lot more gods than just Greek god Hecate, and one of which had a folk tale about the whole right immortality. I sadly am unable to give names as it's been a long while since I heard this tale, but I still remember the basics. If anyone recognizes this tale and is able to shed more light onto it, I would appreciate. So basically, a whole right immortal angers a god that has relations to hell. This god decides to take revenge by removing that Hora immortal's immortality by forcefully reincarnating them. This rendered the person mortal again, and this same god happens to be one of those Hecatia is based on. So what we might have here is a maybe the only person who can truly kill a Hora immortal. If that were the case, then it would make a lot more sense for her and Junko to try and get to Changi since they can actually do something substantial to her. Then there's the fact that people go to great lengths just to protect Changi. Lunarians gave her the Hora elixir supposedly as a reward, but then imprisoned her immediately afterwards. It is also worth to remember that when Kagya, the princess of the capital, an incredibly important person, drank the elixir, she was banished to earth. But Shangyi, who is a god but hardly comparable to the princess of the capital, was imprisoned without any further penalty. Furthermore, when Junko and Hecatia came for her, instead of giving Shangyi up, the Lunarians went to great lengths to resist them. So surely Chang'e must be important to the Lunar Capital, important enough to not give up at all costs. Which speaks volumes of the possibility of Hecatia being probably able to kill her. Then we return to Yukari, because there must be a reason for Yukari to hate the Lunarians so much so as to go to war with them, but there also must be a reason keeping her from teaming up with Chunko and Hecatia and my guess is conflicting motives. With all the information we have right now, I am led to assume that Chang'e must be greatly important to Yukari as well. Important enough as to go to war over, but also important enough to call truce with her enemy when she is genuinely threatened. But what does this all have to do with what happens to Maribel and Renko? 
Now, if we assume that Yukari is Maribel, which I 100% do believe, we are left with the question, where's Renko? Or more like, who's Renko? And I'm quite sure you already know where this is going. The only person I could imagine Yukari slash Maribel going to war over is Renko, who I believe might just be Changi. I crafted this theory before the grimoire of Uzami was out just with what Legacy of Lunatic Kingdom had to offer, and when grimoire of Uzami supported that theory my suspicions were only strengthened. And now, remember, Maribel can absolutely travel through time, so who's to say she couldn't take Renko with her and the two got separated. Now, one thing I cannot say is why would Renko slash Changi be so important to the Lunarians. I have my guesses, but those are once again closer to headcanon territory than actual theory, so we will not go into those. So I guess one thing to take away from this video is that it is actually Maribel who is the real main character of Toho. But anyhow, this was a huge undertaking. We've now gone over each and every last meaningful event in Toho canon and pieced the events together with some good old theory crafting. Now, knowing Zun, it is likely that he will either 1. never give the answers to the points we have theorized about, or 2. he will and the explanation is dog shit. Which is why I wanted to make this video now and not when the theories may no longer be eligible. But all in all, I hope you've learned something today, and if not, I hope I at least managed to keep you interested long enough for you to hear these closing statements. Once again, this has been one massive undertaking and a kind of a testament of how much I actually love this series and hope that it'll thrive once more. But anyhow. Please leave your thoughts and possible theory ideas to the comments. I, like always, love to hear and read them. But now, like always, I have to bid you a farewell. My name is Delvegin, and we'll see you in the next video.